Hi everyone, thanks for making the left turn for today, Sunday, July 2nd, 2017. I'm George Farrar, welcome back to the Jack's Left channel and welcome back to Who Runs Jacksonville, a continuing series here on the channel that looks at Who Runs Jacksonville. Recently on Who Runs Jacksonville, I've been looking at the Florida Times Union and boy, did we find out some interesting information about the Times Union. For example, the Times Union is actually run out of Augusta, Georgia. Think about that the next time you read about the Florida Times Union looking at uh, Jacksonville politics uh, and uh, current news. But now it's time for me to focus on who runs Jacksonville, our corporate media, on the television stations. We're going to focus in on the television stations, particularly the news broadcasting of these television stations. I'm going to be doing this all summer long, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Jacksonville Television, where it's been and where it's at, and we're going to talk about where it's going. Now, first, we look at this picture here of what's called a Quonset hut. Uh, and all of the operations for WMBR television uh, were in this hut. Now, WMBR was the first television station in Jacksonville. It began broadcasting in September 1949. And WMBR was not only a television station, they had a radio station. Washington Post, what we later on would know as Post Newsweek, uh, bought the television station, the radio station. They sold off the radio station, and they kept hold of the television station. And the call letters of the television station were changed from WMBR to WJXT. Now we're going to start looking at some history because we want to look at where is it that we've that we've come from. Now what you're seeing are pages from a broadcasting, um, advertising, marketing, those kinds of um, uh, periodicals back in the uh, 1950s, possibly on into the early 1960s, and then later on we'll see some items, an item definitely from the 70s. So. So WMBR became WJXT, and WJXT for a while had a monopoly on broadcasting until WFGA came along. Now JXT would for a long time have, um, they would have the CBS network, uh, they would be the CBS network affiliate. Uh, later on in the early 21st century, they became independent. Uh, now here we see um, when advertising uh, to owners of TV sets uh, in the 1950s. In 1957, uh, WFGA came to Jacksonville and became a competitor of Channel 4. Uh, they're known as Channel 12, WFGA. They later on became WTLV, which ultimately itself, uh, at one point, they had the NBC uh, were an NBC affiliate. Uh, they later on became an ABC affiliate and then went back to being an NBC affiliate even later. And here you see uh, Action News, back when uh, WTLV TV 12 uh, had Action News. And as a youngster, I remember watching uh, the Action News. I remember, specifically, I remember the early days of Tim Deegan as a meteorologist. So we have WTLV. TV 12, it's now NBC affiliate, uh, and so 
we're going to talk about all these different things, and I'll, I'll be talking a little bit about the past going forward, but we're going to start really looking at what is it all of these different stations do. Now, uh, we have an ABC affiliate currently. Uh, that's uh, channel 25 WJXX. So uh, they, at one point, <laughs> they were not the ABC affiliate. At one point, there was uh, a TV station called WJKS, channel 17. We know it now as um, uh, 17. And uh, they, they, um, would, uh, they, at one point, would broadcast ABC. Then they broadcast NBC. Then they went back to ABC. Now, now there were other stations that tried to really um, get get operations started at other TV stations in the past. This one is WJHP TV, which was putting itself up for sale. Channel thirty six. I never ever had the chance to see Channel thirty six. They were only in um, business, I think, for a couple of years in the nineteen fifties or nineteen sixties, something like that. But uh, because of the way the dials were, you had your lower um, number dials that did better and your higher uh, number dial other dial you had UHF versus VHF um, VHF the big stations were on UHF were uh, with the the higher number stations were on but the higher rank, uh, number stations they would just run more entertainment like WAWS or North Channel 30 would run the all-star movie a uh, WNFT TV 47 uh, now these independent stations they didn't have really heavy news departments I remember back in the 80s uh, Channel 47 had a uh, five-minute uh, news broadcast. It broadcast uh, at 6 o'clock uh, every evening, every weekday evening, if I remember correctly. And then, you know, they had, they had a lot of different entertainment, different shows, movies, things like that. Now, ultimately, uh, 47 and 30 no longer were uh, independent stations running entertainment. Uh, they later on uh, uh, became stations that would not only run entertainment, they would have a full news broadcasts with news teams and the whole nine yards. So I've gone back and forth talking about all this, this stuff that went on back when I was a kid and before I was a kid, the golden age of television. Things are changing for Jacksonville television stations. You know, I'm more likely to encounter these TV stations on Facebook or on Twitter but I am going to watch the news broadcast. I'm going to be specifically looking at the news broadcasts of these stations. I'm going to be looking at the social media. I'm going to be looking at the personalities. I'm going to be looking at the agenda. And I'm going to have a lot to bring you this summer. Please stay tuned. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you later.